Hey everyone, it's Sand. So, the new content just dropped here. So what we're going to do, like everything else, we're going to take a look at what just came out. Uh, starting off, I guess I'll just do the uh, event welfare first. So, the Tall Geese 2. Offense up. Raise, hold on. Raise your melee. Okay, so what we're seeing here is... That's actually really, really good, considering that's... Oh, man. That's that's right out of the box. Oh, my... Level 1, 30%. That's crazy good. Wow. Okay. Chest, what, what do you got going for it? Not bad. Okay, that's a situational ability of trait, because there's only so many enemies that have the space tag. Okay, the hand, <laughs> there's the Dober gun. Okay, and what are you? B pierce and D power? It's beam. Okay, that, that doesn't look too bad. Brutal cooldown time, though, so it probably has a pretty high modifier on damage. 23 seconds initial cooldown, jeez. What do we got here? For space, mid-shot, raised 5, okay. Okay, again, 4 space tag. Not too bad. Backpack. Okay, so... Oh, and they even added the pilot. Uh, whoa, hello. Surprise. And you have a, ch a guts. Okay. And he's... Why the heck is he an infighter? Huh. That's really weird. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then we have our standard fare, everything else. Okay, and the prices really haven't changed either. Okay, so first impressions on the welfare unit. The head is amazing. The rest of it isn't too bad. Um, but because of the four space tag being a requirement for the traits, I put that as kind of an eh, because you kind of really need to have uh, a very specific enemy for that to be useful. And the... Dober gun on the hands. That looks pretty powerful. With the 23 second initial cooldown, uh, that'll probably get down to probably, what, 18 seconds or so, level 10? I don't know. That's not too bad. That It looks like it'll be a pretty powerful uh, beam. My only thing is, though, uh, where is it? It's usually... You know, because hands are melee, right? Yeah, and this is no different. It focuses on the melee. It just, it, the suit itself doesn't seem to really be focused around shot attack, so it looks like the to, the arms for the tall geese, if you really want to maximize the amount of damage you're going to do with a beam weapon, you're going to need a really high statted gun. At least that's the way I'm kind of digging all this, because the gun brings the most um, shot attack. Okay, and the pilot's not too bad either with the, uh, with the guts. On to the important stuff, the gacha. Alright, um... Well, yeah, let's start with the Zeta, I guess. Yep, melee and shot defense down, typical Vulcan. Hyper beam saber. That's, all, that's on the chest, yeah? Yeah, it's on the chest. Oh! Okay, Pierce D power A, but it has a melee boost for the entire squad. It's not bad. What's the stats looking like? Okay. Okay. Good word takes, too. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Arm-mounted grenade launcher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. BD7 magazine. That'll probably get increased. Okay. 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 I wonder about the stats. Ooh. Okay. Not bad numbers. Not bad numbers at all. Okay. 
one of the star of the show here, I think, is going to be that grenade launcher. That's That looks like some nasty bit of business. Not too bad for the arms. Saber boomerang. Beam melee, where you slash and then hurl it. Hmm. Okay, so my, my question looking at this, then. If... You hurl at point first. Is that the range? Is that ranged? Are you able to do this first swing as a blank and then just throw it so you, you can technically use it as a makeshift ranged? That'd be neat. Because it doesn't make too. It's a boomerang though. Whatever. D B minus power. Not bad. Not bad. Six second initial cooldown. Okay. Not bad for leg stat spread. Jetpack, or backpack, I should say. Ooh. That's. Mmm. Not bad. 30% boost to beam. And I can only assume we're about to see the hyper launcher soon. Okay, the beam say oh cross wave, okay, okay. Yep, create shock waves that cleave. Okay, that's from my understanding, that's like a ranged melee attack where you swing and it just sends the shock waves out. Um it's pretty good. It gives you a nice ranged option as a melee. Long Beam Saber. I like the way that looks. That actually looks kind of cool. That's the gun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that looks like... Yeah, okay. So if you have the Speed Attribute, which is what the Zeta is, your melee output's boosted by just a flat number. Okay. The melee attack's decently high. <laughs> decently high. And then we have the Beam Rifle. Oh. Oh. Special shot damage output boosted by 35. Okay. Okay. That has pretty decent... Actually, I'm curious. 3318. And then after that, we're on... Oh, okay, there's the Hyper Mega. And that also has 3318. Okay. So you're, you're definitely the rifle. Enemy shooting power reduced by 30%. That's not... I don't know how to feel about that. Like, it's not a bad trait, just flat reducing enemy shooting, but I don't know, I almost wish it just had more of, like, a self-buff to it. Anyways. Not bad. Long-range weapon? Okay. So, 3318. I'm really, I really want to go check on my new rifle to see what the stat comparison is. And the shield has the missile launcher built in. Okay, you can move while firing. Not bad. Yeah, okay, so it's definitely kind of, yeah, zero second CD. So this is definitely just kind of like a disruptor. I'm going to assume it staggers, so if the enemy is doing a special attack or something and you want to really just interrupt it real quick, this is your ticket. It can also be used for initiative. All right, before I go any further, uh, it was 3318, right? Go back. Yeah, 3318. Because I want to see what my new beam rifle has. F for Amalfi's, man. Poor guy. Okay, so it has lower shot attack overall. Hmm. That's weird. I was expecting it to have higher. Okay, okay. So overall, looking at the Zeta parts, they're not bad, but for some reason it seems like the spread of stats is really skewed towards the lower end, and the traits and the EX skills don't really seem to match up. That's weird. That's weird. And the sword also has 3318. That's extra weird. I have... 
the mace, and that's at max value, just a little stronger, and it has the EX, okay. So at least the physical weapons seem to be at least, you know, more or less the same, but when it comes to the stats, okay. So looking at all the Zeta parts here, um, I think the ones that are you're going to want to look out for are the ones that have good EX skills. This looks like a really nice EX skill. Uh, not only does it have high power, um, but it also increases the melee attack of your entire squad, which is always really nice. Um, the AoE effects are really good. The arms, I'm not really sure how to feel about the, uh, the grenade launcher. Because it just it doesn't seem like it'll have a lot of oomph to it with a low power and low pierce. Okay, not low power. Mid-tier power and low pierce. Yeah, it definitely just looks like a disruptor. Which isn't bad, I guess. But, I don't know. I, I personally don't think it's that useful. Slash with your saber and hurl it. Typical D pierce, B minus power, so it's a little on the weaker side. And then you have the backpack, which is just a huge boost to beam shooting power, which is really nice. And then we have the sword, which gives you that nice cross wave. See, I don't mind so much when a physical attack, or should I say a melee attack, has low power. Or not, sorry. Usually when you see like a D on one and A on the other, that's like a good spread. Uh, it's it's more or less average for the highest tiered skills. Um, when you see it lowered on this, it's not a big deal if it's a ranged melee. Because ranged melee skills are, in my opinion, very, very important. Because normal melee skills, you know, you have to get really close up to your opponent, which opens you up to a ton of different attack options from them. Um... But on the flip side, if you can stay far away from them and still be able to hit them with melee damage, that's big. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but the melee combos in this game, they're plentiful and they do stupid amounts of damage. So, I like that. That's nice. And then the guns are really nothing special, honestly. Like, you have the long, the long beam saber, the big sword. You know, it's a typical sword, but it has like, okay melee attack, but it doesn't have a good EX skill to pair with it. And then the beam rifle has okay shot attack, um, but again, the part trait is kind of, because if you do not have a mid middle uh, shooter or a long shooter, you can't even use special shots. This would be completely useless to you anyways, right? So there's better options, I guess is the best way to say it. It's not an inherently bad part, it's just that there exists better options that have an EX skill to them or a trait that you can actually use in more situations. Remember, I tend to judge things on a neutral standpoint. You know, uh, your machine is a neutral attribute, your pilot is an all-rounder, things like that, because if we start, pick, or sorry, if I start picking into specialties and stuff, it'll be really complicated. And then, yeah, enemy shooting power flat reduced, and it's a rifle, so this will be really effective at long range. It's not bad. See, I'd almost want this just because it's a rifle and it has um, it's effective at long range, but because my beam rifle are, has ridiculously high stats as it is, um, I'm not really. That. It looks cool. I'll give it that. It looks hella cool. Big guns, ten out of ten. But yeah, especially with it being locked to speed. Well. Let's take a look at the... Oh, right. I should actually summarize it instead of kind of leaving it all hanging. So out of out of the Zeta parts, out of all the Zeta, actually, I think it'd be faster to just go back and go in so I can start from the front. The head, not too bad, but the uh, EX skill is extremely common among other parts. Really, it's not a necessity unless you really like the, uh, the Zeta Gundam's head appearance or you don't have a good head yet. But the skill's not bad. Uh, the debuff is nice. The chest has a very standard uh, melee attack, 
Uh, it is a, from what I can tell here, a close range melee, but it's really nice because of the aura. So this one I would recommend if you do not have a good chess piece yet, or you're looking for another good chess piece, I would recommend this because of the EX skill. The arms, again, the skill on them is a interrupt, at least that's my gathering from it. Uh, meaning you use it, and because it has seven rounds, you know, you can constantly kind of fire it off. And based on the way the game works and staggering, every time you hit them, it'll stagger, break them. So if they're in the middle of a melee combo, it'll stop them. They're in the middle of shooting, stop them, right? So that's what a disrupt is. So if you need a disrupt or you want to try some kind of niche setup with disrupts, it's probably the item for you. There are, in my opinion, much better arms in the game, especially those with really good EX skills. Uh, the one we recently had, the Astray Red Frame, comes to mind. So, uh, I don't know if I would say replace uh, an existing good EX skill, but, you know, it, it's an option, I guess. The feet. Again, um, these aren't too bad. The EX skill on them, though, leaves a little bit to be desired. It has okay peer, or okay power, low pierce. Um, from what I can tell, it starts as a close-range melee and then ends as a long-range, but until I see it in action, I can't be sure. Um, if it does have the ability to be long-range, then it's not too bad. Because, um, again, ranged melee skills, they do melee damage, and you don't have to be close. And melee does dumb damage when it's an EX skill. Um, but if it's just close range, like you have to hit them with the first swing for the second part to kick in, which I don't think there's very few things that actually require that using like Tricaros Rutch from the Blitz or whatever. It's a multi-hit combo, but you still do the whole thing, even if you whiff it. Um, but yeah, so not too bad if it is ranged, but there are much better legs floating around in the game with better skills and traits to them. Um, the backpack is actually quite nice if you use beam weapons. The part trait on it, uh, obviously, just gives you a huge flat boost if you use beam damage. So that's really nice. But if you're a melee type, you don't really need this. There are much better options for you, even in the standard pools, actually. I think it's Exia that has the Trans Am into its backpack, which is a melee combo. That would be so much better for a melee machine than this. But if you are a machine that focuses on shooting and uses beam weapons, you're probably going to want to look at maybe trying to get this. And yeah, the sword, crosswave, shockwaves, it's a ranged melee, very nice. It has, you know, okay power, low pierce, uh, low initial cooldown. I'd recommend this sword if you don't have an existing one with a good skill or trait on it. Um, from what I see, though, it does have slightly less melee attack than other options that are available, um, like the Mace from the Barbados, which has the Iron Impact skill, which is a, uh, well, not just damage, but it also gives a boost to uh, defense to your squad. So, up to you on that one. If you don't have the Mace, obviously, this is a good pick. But again, there are better options available in the general pools. And because the Zeta is not going to be available after this event, I don't know how much you want to prioritize getting something that has better options. It is a gacha though, and the game is very forgiving. Pick your favorites. The long beam saber, which is just the big sword, um, uses the rifle as a sword. <laughs> um, your melee output damage just gets a flat boost if you use the speed attribute. Not a bad trait, considering speed is extremely common as a part type, especially from gacha machines. Um, and a flat boost to melee damage is always nice. However, because there are percentage boosts available elsewhere, I'm not sure how much a flat bonus is really that useful. Especially when I see people doing damage numbers in the thousands, right? 35 at maximum, you're probably going to start off at like 18 or something. It's minimal. But... Again, you know, if you don't have anything else, that is a solid four-star uh, weapon. Then we have the normal beam rifle. It's not the mega uh, can, just the beam rifle. Um, not too bad in the shot attack department. Not as broken as the new Gundam is. Um, I guess it's kind of unfair to make that the standard because uh, that is a stupidly high shot attack. Anyways... A special shot damage output boost by a flat number. 
Again, you can't use this without the right job license, so I would put this under consideration. If you have a pilot that can use the middle shooter or long shooter job, and thus you have access to the special shot, this might be a very good pickup for you. Um, because special shot is just a constant DPS tick and it staggers and it locks people down and you can hit multiple units. So getting a flat damage boost to it is pretty useful. But again, you can only really use that under certain circumstances because you may not have those job types available. And then we have yep, the Hyper Mega Launcher and then the Shields next, right? Anyways, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd recommend this because it's a rifle. It has kind of ass stats on it. Uh, okay, not ass stats, but it doesn't have as great stats as it could have, uh, especially for a limited machine's weapon and one that looks that imposing. So it's up to you if you want it or not. I put it on the if you get it, it's good. If you don't, it's not really a big loss. That's kind of how I'd put it. Okay, and then we got the Zeta Shield, the last part from the Zeta. You have missiles that are in the shield. It has low power, really low pierce, okay magazine. This also looks like an interrupt. So this machine, the shield and the arms with two interrupts in it, um, kind of dirty. You can just kind of stun lock something um, until you have to reload, of course. Um... But yeah, I don't. I don't know really. This this none of the Zeta parts seem to have as outstanding stats or anything. Yeah, ignore the the vehicle sounds in the background. It's really hot out. We just had a decent amount of rain and it's like humid and stuff. So I need to have the windows open or I'm gonna die from the heat. So uh, just just ignore it. Okay, so not bad. Not great. If you get it, cool. If you don't, I don't think it's a big loss. Um, the EX skill is not really that amazing. Like again, it's an interrupt, but so let's move on to the Cubely. Kind of interesting seeing what this brings. So the head has a recovery. That's that seems to be kind of like really common now. Just lots of recovery stuff. I don't mind, but again. Like I said originally, when I saw the Exia with it, we don't really have any content yet that demands recovery. Nothing's really that hard. So, right now, I don't know. Whoa. The head has a crazy amount of shot attack. What? And there's the chest as well? No, oh, duh, okay. <laughs> Middle shooter job buff. EX skill gets up. Okay. So, again, this is very job reliant. If you don't have a middle shooter job, then this skill is completely useless. If you are able to activate it, um, it would completely depend on the skill effect that you have. Something to note, though, because um, I, I know this, let's say you had this at 22%, absolutely maxed out. You know, you had the, the most swole cubely chest in the game. And then you had, let's say, the head from the uh, tall geese that gave the melee and defense buff, right? And that's at max. And it was like 34% or something. Remember, 34% boost. And then that 34% is increased by 22%. Not the number gained from the 34%, but just 34%. And then you add 22% extra. So that's what? Uh, two tenths, three six. So that's seven points. You go from, you know, 34 or whatever to like 40. It's not a colossal boost. And it's not that worth it, especially when you remember you're probably, unless you're a whale, going to get one copy of this. And that's going to be probably sitting at, I don't know, um, 16, 15, maybe 12%. So that's going to be absolutely minimal, right? If you have a 12% boost on a even a 38% thing, right? 1, 3.8, 40 on percent, 41, 42, something like that. Personally, I think there's much better options for the chest. Um, but it does really depend on the EX skills that you're boosting with it. Alright, uh, the hands. Oh, beam gun. Cool. 
finger lasers, I'm guessing. Pew pew. Oh no, from your forearms. Okay, and you can move while firing. A Pierce D Power 11 magazine. So that's interesting that it uses more Pierce, and it is a beam focused weapon, so you do need to make sure your shot power is nice and high for that. Okay. Okay. The Pierce is nice because it, it ignores a lot of the enemy's beam resistance, which means you can do some really good damage with it. Um, not bad. What's the stat distribution? Okay. Yeah, definitely not melee arms. I'll put it for, as four stars go. Not made for melee. Surprise, right? Another middle shooter job boost. Mid shot attack raised by 20%. So, if you manage to get your hands on a middle shooter, this cubely might be up your alley. These are some nice boosts, but it's heavily reliant on the middle shooter. That's not bad, though. Okay. And then the back. So, there's no weapons for the cubely, and this has the funnels. Yeah. A plus Pierce D power, same as the new. Okay, so my general consensus on the cube elite parts, really, um, none of the parts are bad, none of the parts are amazing, uh, the funnels are great though, uh, the amount of natural 4 star funnels that we have in the game is extremely limited, so if you get your hands on that, kudos to you. Um, the head, it's not... An amazing piece honestly the recovery skill is not bad but it's becoming more and more common and now that it's also available on a welfare part it's really devalued uh, simultaneously again we just don't really have any content that requires recovery yet that may change in the future and make it worth a lot more but for now I personally don't think it's really that big of a deal to worry about it before when it was just the Exia the only like a gacha unit and that was it it was a big deal but now not so much. So now we have... I guess there's probably like some other parts that have it too, but I'm talking about stuff that came out recently because I'm not really looking at the backlog of available parts. I'm looking more at what's been in the gatch, and that's kind of it. So, so next we have the, the Cubely Chest. Again, it's not a great stat spread. It's not bad. It's pretty midline for an A4 star. It relies on the middle shooter job and the EX skill effect boost. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, because, again, EX skills vary quite a bit. And the boost is very minimal, depending on what kind of increase you're getting. And then the hands with the beam gun. It has, you know, decent peers, low power, 11 shots from it. If you have a high shot attack, you're probably going to want these arms because it's going to just start ripping through whatever you're pointing at. If you don't have high beam attack, and or shot attack I should say, and you're looking for arms for like melee or something like that, you want to stay away from these. Uh, they have a lower ceiling for melee than other arms do. Natural 4 star arms I should say. So... Yeah, it's like a good 400 points lower or so, because I think the Estrays was like 2,500 or something, wasn't it? Maybe it was higher. The feet, they're not bad. Um, again, midline stat distribution, a little high on the shot attack, I think. Uh, but the, the trait is reliant on you having the middle shooter job. Uh, but the buff on this one's at least good. It's just a 20% uh, mid-shot boost, so... Not bad. Uh, and in case you're curious, mid shot means that you you are at mid range and you're firing a weapon from there, and you're that's where you're doing damage from. Um, you can roll back and see my thing on job licenses I did a few videos ago, uh, where I cover the reticle and different distances and things like that. It was brief, but it should at least give you kind of an idea of uh, what it means by mid shot. And finally, the back piece. This one, I 100%, this is the star of the show for the Cubely. We only have one other natural four-star funnel system, so getting another one is amazing. Um, the aesthetics leave a little bit to be desired. You know, it's more or less just a glorified butt flap, but funnels are funnels, and funnels are great. 
Um, in case you missed me talking about the new Gundam funnels and why they were so good, it was quite a while ago. Funnels have no clip, so they can go clean through terrain. They are able to attack from 360 degrees. And, well, you can't do anything about them other than deal with them. And why that's really important, you can fire them from anywhere, even if your enemy is hiding behind buildings or stuff, and I'll still seek them out. Because all, I think every job except defender, when they pull up their shield and defend, they'll only protect a area in front of them. I think it's like 80 degrees or something like that. And no, it's a little more than that. 150? Anyways, it's, it's some set of degrees in front of them, but everywhere else will not be protected. And if they're hit from one of those sides, then they'll take damage and stagger out of defense. So if you fire funnels at them and they pull up their shield, chances are you're going to just go right through the shield. I don't know how often that'll happen because AI is AI, but it's still nice to, you know, have the ability to break through that. Plus, it's just constant DPS ticks, right? If you have high enough shot attack or you have a part that gives a flat EX damage boost, you want these funnels. Like, no question. So that's kind of my opinion on this. The Kubali back is a 10 out of 10. The Kubali arms, if you have a high shot attack or you're kind of focusing on a ranged build, would probably be a good uh, idea to pick up. And then from the Zeta... There's really nothing amazing here, unfortunately. It's really sad, too, because there was a lot of potential in this suit. I really don't know how to feel about that. Crosswave, it's great. Um, the backpack gives really good bonuses for shooting. Uh, the feet have a... looks like a pretty decent skill. The arms are an interrupt along with the shield. And then, yeah, and then you have the chest with the other skill. But nothing truly amazing on the Zeta Gundam, unfortunately, in my opinion. My opinion only goes so far, right? Well, let's take a look at the pilots now, I guess. I've talked enough about the machines. Alright. We'll start with Nickel. Speed. See, that's, that's fitting because the Blitz, the machine he canonically uses, is speed attributed. And EX skill piercing boosted 22%. Um, I'm not sure how to feel about that. I guess the Tricaros Rush... Actually, yeah, let's check that real quick. What was the Tricaros Rush's distribution? Yeah, okay. That's nasty. Okay, so... The way that Pierce works is the level of Pierce denotes a amount of resistance that your machine will ignore. So if the enemy has... I don't know. Let's look at my stat pool. Yeah, so I have 1,110 beam resistance and 1,542 physical resist on this machine, right? If somebody had A ranked Pierce, I don't know, let's ballpark and pretend something like, what, 30% is ignored or something like that, right? So what would happen is Nichols trait would increase that by an extra 22%. So 22% of whatever, 30%. That's a fifth, five, yeah, what, 35%. That'll add up a lot more than you think, because one thing to remember about um, the way that stats work in this game, it's very, very, um, it's not additive, it's multiplicative. So I have 6,717 shot attack on this machine. I tried running the Gerber EX before the event ended with this machine, and I got my ass handed to me. I was doing, like, practically no damage. Once I put all my parts together, consolidated it, I had something like 7,500 attack. Oh no, here we go, 9,200 shot attack. I was ripping through those machines, like two, three shotting them, and the boss, I just special shotted it and died. So it's very important for raw stats to be increased. Um, it may sound slightly contradictory because when I said before, having like an EX skill percent increase, right, only means so much, it's because the gains from that are different than the gains from this trait in particular here. Piercing is a big deal for ignoring, because even if, if you ignore even 5% more of the enemy's resistance, it's multiplicative, it's not additive. 
So it's just something to remember. Resistance, it's, it's like most MMOs. If you have an enemy and you constantly reduce their defense by a percent over and over and over and over again, it eventually loses its effect. But if you suddenly attack another avenue, like instead of just defense, you also reduce, I don't know, resistance or spell resist, magic defense, whatever, it, it'll do more. And it's important to, even if you buffed your own attack versus just constantly nuking their defense, it makes a larger difference because of the numbers. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, Fate Grand Order is a game that I know this very well in. I have a ton of units that have defense downs, and I also have units that have attack ups and specific buffs for card types. And if I just stack defense down over and over and over again on something, sure, I'll do more damage, but I will do exponentially more by using a defense down and then attack buffing and then buffing a specific card type and then attacking because the number difference is just increased by such a large gap due to those buffs. So something to keep in mind when you're playing around with units and stuff. You know, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Man, I want to bring up Nickel. Why do you keep bringing up Bernard? Come on now. Work with me. Thank you. So long and short, this skill isn't bad, but you have to make sure that the skills that you're using have high power and low pierce. Or if you want, you can even have it, you know, high pierce and you could just gamble on this doing a lot of work. So that's the thing, right? We don't actually know what those letters mean. As far as I'm aware, we still don't have anyone that's been able to data mine the game for the formulas. So we're not 100% sure what the letters actually mean, like, as a hard value. So it's a lot of assumptions on how the game works and from what the tutorials tell us. Anyways, moving on. I'd say for a three star, that's not a bad trait, especially considering his canonical suit is speed, and it really benefits the one EX skill that his suit has uh, that would actually uh, benefit from this, which is the Tricaros Rush. He could probably has much better applications in other places, but unfortunately, I am a uh, I still have a lot to learn about all the parts that are in this game because there are a ton of them if you were to wear. I see some people cracking out some crazy builds. And then we have Bernard. When your eight armor is 80% or less, oh, you recover armor gradually. So that's neat. Actually, that's, that's, wow. Okay. So that's just like a passive heal. Hmm. That's cool. So I'd almost say that trait is better than the recovery ability. One, it's a trait. It doesn't take an EX skill slot. And two... Oh, sorry, it's 60% on 80%, whatever. And it's probably a lot lower value when um, it's at lower levels. But the point of this is the other one's like just a flat heal and then it goes on cooldown. This is like a constant tick. It's a much lower amount because the other's like percent based and you probably have a few thousand, so this is very minimal. But... This, the concept of this skill is really cool. I'm gonna say that this application and the numbers are very lackluster, at least when you get up to like the higher armor values and your suits get more and more powerful, this is not really as good. If it was like percent based instead of a flat number, it'd be a lot better, but because it's a flat number and it's such a small amount, you're probably never gonna see this actually effective. Like, if we're gonna be real in PvP, most fights take seconds. Even really high-powered suits, the fights take seconds to do. And this will not tick nearly fast enough to make it worthwhile instead of slotting something that does better. You know, like something that gives a flat damage reduction or something that gives flat stat boosts or something. So I'd say Bernard, he's not bad, but that trait is just... Oof. Leaves a lot to be desired. Anyway, so that's kind of my view on all the new gadget units that got added. I'd say Nickel's not too bad, but his EX traits kind of uh, niche is the way to put it. Bernard is, if I'm going to be blunt, it's kind of a letdown. It's a really cool ability on paper, but the execution of it is very um, meh. 
So, because yeah, how much armor? Let's see. Let's just let's grab my current use suit. Yeah. So I have twenty eight hundred ninety two armor on this suit. If I'm recovering, let's say five gradually over time when I'm below sixty percent, that's a drop in the bucket. That's nothing. It's not worth it. But, but. If you like the pilot, don't let me stop you. He has the raw stats. He'll still be useful. Actually, on that note, what were his raw max stats? Very balanced. Okay. And then a nickel. Okay. See, I find it weird that he skewed towards melee when his suit's gimmick was ranged, but whatever. Actually, I'm curious. What was, what's Amaro's? Yeah, and his is skewed towards shot. Okay. Anyways, that kind of wraps up what I'm going to do on this video. I'm going to do another video actually right after this one. Um, I'll probably upload it sometime tomorrow where I um, do some of the gacha rolls and I talk about the event a little bit. I would do it in this video too, but I feel like it's condensing too much. So I'll just kind of split it up. So I'll make sure to get this uploaded and then I'll do the other one a little bit later. So peace out. And I'll see you in the uh, other video coming shortly.